What I'm going to do is in John chapter 14, uh, verse 15 through verse number 19, I believe it is. And again, I'm thankful to Brother Hamilton and to leaders of this church for this opportunity. John 14, verse 15 through verse number 18. When you found it, say amen. amen. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Is that in your Bible? Amen. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Skip quickly to verse 25 as he conclu concludes his, his thoughts and gives a benediction here. He says, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These are the words of Jesus. And last week, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and they gave me the topic, uh, I have kept the faith. And I told him that the faith was anything that Jesus said while he was here. And so we need to realize that uh, he has all authority. He has all authority. He has all authority. Jesus has all authority. And so when we read what Jesus said, we literally can put our faith in his word. Now see, y'all that know me, I, I'm a simple preacher. I'm a practical, relevant kind of preacher. I told them in Fort Lauderdale, I'm not a preacher's preacher. I don't even profess to be a preacher's preacher. I'm a preacher for that person that's in the pew who has problems and who's persecuted and who's trying to persevere. I'm trying to help that person in the pew. When you leave here, leave better than when you walked in. Yeah. And so when I share with you Jesus' words, I I'm literally sharing with you that which will help you and sustain you and keep you uh, when trouble comes. Most folk don't know this about us, but when we come to worship, we worship God because of what he has done. Church, it would be one thing if God was a sometimey God. If he was an average God, if he, if he was a mediocre God, well then we'd give him sometimey praise. We, we give him mediocre praise. We, we give him average praise. But he's not mediocre. He's not average. He's not sometimey. And that's why when you come to worship God, you ought to give him awesome praise. Don't, 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 don't ever get so caught up in yourself and think that you are making it in and of yourself. You, you got up this morning by the grace of God. I don't care how sharp you think you look this morning. You're looking good only by the grace. Can, can I preach up in here this morning? 
And so when you come to worship God, you ought to thank him for what he has done. All oh, You don't have to go to last month. Just go to last week. Matter of fact, don't worry about last week. Just go to last night. When, 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 when you lay it down and close your eyes, your, your mind was dormant, your, your brain, your body dormant. It's, re, it's recuperating, it's relaxing, it's re, recreating. And so while you're sleeping, you're slumbering and snoring, can't own, God's still awake. Watch it over what belongs to him. And when you wake up in the morning, first thing you do, if it's by the grace of God, open your eyes. And see, I used to, I used to, Brother Hamilton, I used to get up in the morning, I take off running. I get up in the morning now, I sit on the edge of the bed just to see what's still working. I'm serious, Carol. One time I got up, the last time I got up running, I fell flat on my face. So I don't do that no more. I get up and I sit there and I, and I first thing I think, Lord, I thank you for another day. I had no idea that today God wanted me to come over here and share a word. But I'm living by his providence. And so there's somebody in this assembly, this August body, and there's a great crowd here today, but there's somebody in here today who is troubled. There's a reason why God can't get the glory out of you that he so rightly deserves. I, I look at folk when we worship. And I'm not trying to judge your worship, but there ought to be some time when you at least smile. There ought to be some time, even in the recesses of your heart, that you say, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You might not stand up. You may not throw your hands up in the air. You may not clap. But there ought to be something inside of you. When you come into the presence of the Lord, you sing the songs of Zion. Somebody's praying on your behalf. you communing with the Lord. There ought to be something in you that makes you feel a little bit better about how good God has been to you. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, are you going to get to your text? I say, yep, when I get there. <laughs> but here's what we need to realize. I, I, Y'all know I take these trips to Israel and everything, and every time I go, I... I take my group, and we're going again in a few days, those who want to go, April the 21st through the 30th. Uh, I tell them as soon as we get there, I say, listen, how many of you believe in God? They say, every hand goes up. I say, why do you believe in God? They say, because the Bible says. I said, okay, why do you believe in the Bible? They say, well, because it's inspired. I said, you're absolutely right. I said, but it's deeper than that. I tell them, I said, you're going to see places that you read in the Bible. And when you read about these places you see in the Bible and you see them with your own eyes, then you ought to be assured that surely if he did what he did over there for them, he'll do the same thing for us over here. I said, but them, I said, now listen, the word is inspired, yes. Because Peter said, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Paul said, all scriptures given by the inspiration of God. I said, but the other thing is, the deeper part of it is, the Bible is the evidence of our witnesses. They literally wrote down what they saw. And it was not just for them, but that was for you and me. I think I was here one time before and I took y'all to the Sea of Galilee and to the tomb of Lazarus in different places and I showed you what I saw. But more than that, even if you never see it, you ought to be glad that Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed, John 20, 29, because you may never get to go to Israel. You may never see the tomb of Lazarus or see Nazareth or Capernaum or Bethlehem. You may never go up on Mount Sinai as we did in Cairo, Egypt. But one thing you ought to rest assured in knowing is that if it's in the Bible, it is authentic because it's inspired by God and it's the evidence of our witnesses. I told the first crowd this morning, I love John because John... John's the kind of preacher like I am. He just cuts straight across the field. Don't beat around the bush, just straight across the field. He said, Jesus is son of God. Not only that, he said, Jesus is God. And so I believe John. John 1.1, 1, 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with 
God and the word was God. In the beginning was God. Am I right? Verse 14, he said, and the word became flesh. And he dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we beheld his glory. John said, I know Jesus is not just son of God, but he is God. And the thing I love about John is, John said, I'm going to validate it by what I saw. We were at the wedding of Cana. They ran out of wine. They brought him jugs that was filled with water. And I saw him change water into wine. John said we were out on a boat one night. He left us on the shoreline. When we looked up, he come walking on water. He said, I know he's son of God. John said, I was with him one time and a man walked up with a withered hand. He had paralysis in his hand. Jesus straightened out his hand. He said, I know he's God. He said, we were in a crowd one day and people were everywhere. And some woman pushed her way all the way through and grabbed the hem on the hem. And he said, somebody touch me. And we said to him, Lord, there's so many folk out here. Yeah, and he said, no, no, I felt right to leave my body. Somebody touched me. And a woman who was dying, who was bleeding to death, was healed of her infirmity. John said, I know he's God. I know he's God. He said, I saw him give back sight to the blind. I saw him make the lame to walk. I saw him make the deaf to hear. I saw him make the dumb to talk. I saw him take two fish and five loaves of bread, open a buffet out on a mountainside. John said, I know he's God. I was with him when Jairus' daughter died. He brought her back to life. I went with him to the tomb of Lazarus. Saw him raise a dead man, been dead four days. John said, I know he's God. Yeah. See, I don't care what nobody said. I was standing there with his mama. I watched him die on Calvary's hill. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. Three days later, got up from the grave. We were in a room. We had locked the doors. All of a sudden, he come walking in the room. John said, I know he's God. And now if, the, if that ain't good enough, John said, I was standing outside of Jerusalem. Me and the other brethren, he had just finished commissioning us. We looked at him, watched him get on clouds, go back up in the glory. I know he's God. So church, what I'm trying to tell you before I get to my text is you can put your faith in the word of God because it is inspired by God and it is the evidence of eyewitnesses. So listen to Jesus talk. Jesus says, if you love me, stay hooked now. Stay hooked. Because he's not just talking to the whole body, he's talking to each one individually. See, oftentimes we come to church, we think the preacher, he, he sure telling them today, ain't he? No, the preacher's preaching to you. As I went out the door today, people kept saying, that sermon was just for me. You was talking directly to me. I was talking to everybody, but the word finds good soil. And so Jesus said to all those men that were right in front of him, he said, now listen, I've heard y'all declare your love for me. He said, now if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, I call this sermon, Hold On to Your Love. Hold on to your love. And you're going to see the value of it before I get to the end of this sermon. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I'm going to pray the Father that he send you another comforter. The Lord knew they were uncomfortable because... They had come to the conclusion, this man that we've deserted all far, we've been following him two and a half, three years now, he's getting ready to leave us. It, it, it became very apparent to them that we're going to be down here preaching this unpopular gospel and he's nowhere around to help us. See, they were comfortable as long as the Lord was around. You remember when they got up on the mountaintop? And uh, we went to this place. I think I, and I didn't tell y'all about it. I told somebody about it. We went to Tagba. And up at Tagba, Tagba was way up in the hills. No, no, no Walmart, no Safeway, no Albertsons, no, 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 no nothing to find any food to eat. And the disciples came to us and said, Master, we better send these folk away. We're going to have a ride up here. 
But the Lord said, no, they need not go away. Y'all remember this? 